This episode is sponsored by Shutterstock.com. With over 20 million high quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code GAMEBREAKER6. This episode is also brought to you by Audible. For a free 30-day trial and to receive a free audiobook, just head on over to audible.com slash GameBreaker. GameBreaker TV. Just realized this is the wrong music. This is the right one. Don't laugh. Don't laugh, Missy. This is serious business. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 7 of Conspiracy Crab, June 26, 2013. As I like to joke, I'm your host, John Oliver. Gary's away for the week. He went out to Maui or something, so I'm here all week covering for him. Today, with World of Warcraft's patch 5.4 on the public test realm, it's time for some speculation about the big orc himself, War Chief Garrosh Hellscream. But first, Game Breaker from Game Breaker TV. You know her, you love her. Get your tinfoil hats. Get ready for some conspiracy. It's our resident red shirt, Adrian Clark, aka Missy, aka Giggles. <laughs> that was that was epic. Oh my gosh. That was wow. That was yeah. That was special. On my part. <laughs> Way to start the show. <laughs> yep, I do what I can. I do what I can. So let's just jump right on into it. Uh, starting off with young Garrosh Hellscream. So yeah, we're gonna look at uh, kind of what Garrosh was before he became the big boss of this next patch. Uh, in World of Warcraft, so speculating a little bit about what the pus public test realm has in store for him. Uh, it's just kind of a little bit more fun. So before we get into all that, let's take a look at Garsh's humble past. Now, uh, I remember when he was just kind of this little emo kid in the Grand. Kind of ashamed of his father, didn't really, you know, just absolutely set himself up for, for all of the hate that he gets. But... Um, what was his life leading up to that point? Because I don't think a lot of people know him outside of what he was in the Grand. So, the Orcs started out as peaceful people, pretty similar to how the Tauren are. And then the betrayal from within started as the Burning Legion posed as, you know, important ancestors and told the Orcs to forsaken their shamanistic ways and turn against the Serene Draenei. So they start a little bit of genocide on Draenor, drink the blood of a pit lord. And we have the Orcs of the Warcraft RTS uh, and of today's World of Warcraft, the whole all green skinned. No, it's it's not really hard to notice that Garrosh clearly has brown skin instead of green. So uh, I think it's safe to assume that he didn't end up drinking that demonic blood that you're talking about with his father. But why not? What, what, what was going on that he didn't partake? So, at the same time as all of the orcish warmongering, there was this really terrible outbreak among them called the Red Pox. And Garrosh like being chicken pretty pox? young... Yeah, chicken pretty much like Chicken Pox. Ch it was, chicken Pox it was for worse. orcs? It was even worse because it was like red pustules and sometimes they might not survive and made them really weak. It was a little sad. But, but so, you know, Garrosh supposedly was born about the same time that the horde started consolidating into one unit and so it's safe to assume he got sick before the whole blood drinking ceremony because he did end up catching red pox as well and he really wasn't mentioned much in the warcraft rts's if you notice like the first appearance of him is during the burning crusade and he's pretty much left by himself in a grand we have no idea where his mother is i'm really annoyed that there's no mom mentioned at all and so we're just back to his whole, you know, Garrosh has family issues. <laughs> and you talked about that in the first episode of Conspiracy Craft. You talked a little bit about the family issues that he had, uh, especially daddy issues. I mean, he's practically a... Never mind, I won't go there. Uh, but you touched <laughs> on it briefly. Uh, but just what kind of issues did he have towards his father, uh, Hellscream? So 
Cargas Bladefist stops by Nagrand looking for able bodied warriors around the time of the Second War. And for those people that aren't familiar with Cargas Bladefist, he was in the Shattered Halls Burning Crusade dungeon, like the heroic dungeon, I think it was. was. So, Garrosh, was he that optional like, boss that showed up? No, he was like, I think it was the first boss with like the fist blades or something like that. I'm not sure. Hmm. I can't remember. That might have been All the I know final is he didn't one, have hands. <laughs> he didn't have hands. He had blade fist, which I guess is why he's called a blade fist. So Garrosh asks him about, you know, you know, asks him about what's what's going on with my dad because he wants to be able to go fight with his father Grom, and he's ignored. Instead, we have Cargath looking around in Nagran, going, "Oh, you Maghar are all weak, and you should do the rest of the orcs a favor and die." That's not a very nice thing to say at like especially around at that influential age. I'm guessing yeah. he's a teenager by now. So you, now he's got the thought of I'm weak. <laughs> you you tell you tell a you know a, a teenager that he's weak and, and can't do anything. The very first thing he's gonna start to go do is is you know pump iron and, and set out to prove that person wrong, which kind of explains why Garrosh just you know is, is so bulky. He was told that he's weak. Now he's you know <laughs> bloodlust for power because he, he's subconsciously probably trying to prove that he's not weak, but uh, Kargoth doesn't tell him about his father, so when did Garrosh really go all emo about it? Supposedly, and there's no citation for this, I went looking, but great mother uh, Gaia spoke of his father's damnation that's not only for himself, but the entirety of the orc race by being the first to drink Manoroth's blood. And since he didn't know the whole story, he felt it was a betrayal, you know, not only to all the orcs and everything, but more importantly to himself. I mean, his own dad can't tell him what he did wrong, doesn't even come up to him. And so knowing his father's guilt, he sank into like this huge melancholy depression that it took Thrall's arrival in Negron to snap him out of it. Now, I remember, you know, for, for me, playing Alliance, uh, don't judge me. I remember a, a whole fanfare of, of Thrall of entering the Grand, and I, I didn't get to experience it myself, but I knew so many Horde players that just talked about it being this big pinnacle of like, holy cow, this is this is amazing. This is what World of Warcraft in-game cinematic should be like. Like, talking to, to Garrosh, you know, showing up, uh, showing what his father kind of did for their people in general just it was all around an amazing feeling to the end of the grand zone for the horde players so one would think that after that garish wouldn't really have turned out so bad but maybe you know he was on the path to being someone good when exactly did he steer in the complete opposite direction what was said or, or that could have been done to have been such a, a, a turning point from such a, a, a rectifying situation See, being a writer myself, it's always a good idea to figure out just when a villain starts being, you know, being a villain. What's their turning point? And Garrosh isn't any different, though he's developed much better, in my opinion. So there's, there's two points that influence Garrosh in the way he thinks now. First, there was this contemptuous female named female orc, you know, her name was Krina. You might you might remember her. She was kind of the orc leader in Grizzly Hills during Wrath of the Lich King. It's, it's not a well-known story because it was a, one of the leadership short stories around Cataclysm called Heart of War. I'd highly recommend to look it up if you're really wanting to go deeper into Garrosh's psyche to figure out why he is the way he is. But, uh, digressing. Uh, what Kieran Krina, I can't even say her name, K-R-E-N-N-A, Krina, said to Garrosh, that stuck with him the most is that she dared to speak against and question her war chief thrall about what he was doing. She, like she, just talking to Garrosh, she knows who he is clearly because he's green. He shows up in Orgrimmar, or not? He's not green. He's brown, so he doesn't. Sh he's not green. Um, so she pointed out how you know they're paying penance in the deserts of Duratar when there's lush lands and like just north of them in Ashenvale. Then there's the ever-encroaching forces of the Alliance from all sides. And Thrall being slow to act, or he's doing nothing against the Alliance as they slowly push their way in everywhere else. So those words that Krina said influenced Garrosh with his drive to push Thrall into action more right before the Scourge invasion happened. 
How did how did Garrus really push Thrall into action there though? Well, we all know Garrus is like the most hot headed orc. So he challenged Thrall to the Macagora, which is a duel of honor and a challenge for leadership of either an individual cl clan or the entire horde itself. And though he was never at risk at death, like everybody's familiar with Macagora with Karen and Garrosh, which that was sadness, but I'm I, yeah, <laughs> ah, that was sadness. So he didn't, he didn't like, so he didn't have the risk of death, but he did lose the challenge, though. Actually, technically, he was interrupt. Like their duel was interrupted by the Herald of the Lich King. There was that whole, uh, what was it, a minor patch and event right before Wrath happened. So, in the very end, Garrosh did get his wish. The Horde mobilized to Northrend, even though he's so impatient. Now you said he got more than just his wish. Uh, what 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 was this wish that he was kind of looking for? Just to to be Lear? Well. Thrall actually appointed Garrosh as, like, he, he got pretty pretty far in the ranks. He's actually, during the Wrath of the Lich King, he's overlord of the Warsong Offensive, which is the main army, army, army? <laughs> of the Horde expedition. So it seemed that the reason why Thrall gave him that rank was to teach him patience and responsibility. He's in charge of not just his soldiers and fighting with the soldiers. He's in charge of every, every other leader that's out there as well fighting on the other fronts. And that requires a lot of strategy and a lot of responsibility and keeping up to date. So, Garrus didn't really learn from it, and he still took the opportunity to battle against the Alliance instead of the Scourge. And ironically, he appointed Karina as commander of Conquest Hold and Grizzly Hills, even though she detested Garrosh for what his father did. And, hmm. you know, Garrosh could not seem to let go of his desire of conquest against the Alliance. And obviously, as you said, that's stemming from Krenna. But before we move on, I want to take a moment and thank and tell you guys about one of our awesome, awesome sponsors, Shutterstock. They are an amazing, amazing website that have partnered with us, uh, giving you an amazing deal for 30% off of your new accounts if you guys use the promo code GAMEBREAKER6. And it's an amazing service. I don't know if any of you guys out there uh, are trying to create YouTube channels or create your own content. Uh, maybe you're familiar with some green screen stuff, uh, but obviously the, the biggest part to, to doing green screen is you need a great background. I can tell you for a fact that many times I've turned to Shutterstock.com for this exact reason. Uh, you know, this one in particular, I can't tell you guys exactly what show it's for, um, but I can tell you right here, I've used this one. This, this exact image, uh, you can get an amazing high quality, you can get a small, medium, or large, uh, depending on what you're, you're needing in different DPI resolutions. Um, and it's super, super simple. All you guys got to do is head on over to Shutterstock.com. Right here, you got a little bit of search bar. Over to the left over here, you have your image type, whether it be photos, illustrations, or vectors. Think of a keyword like I did, industrial backgrounds. Maybe you want to put yourself up against a nice blue sky. You just type in sky, you let the search do its thing, and boom, there you go. A whole bunch of images, photos that are of the sky. But hey, maybe you didn't want photos. Maybe you wanted some icon -y, kind of vectors shutterstock does that too it's all you got to do is just click that vector on the left hand side you guys will get a whole different array clouds hey maybe there's some uh you got some needs for some nice 2d cloud animation head on over to shutterstock and you can get that for you guys remember like i said if you guys head on over and use the promo code gamebreaker6 you guys will get 30 percent off so please 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 head on over and do that they're an amazing amazing service and if you guys ever need them first place you should think of shutterstock.com all right, getting back into some World of Warcraft conspiracy. We left you guys off talking about the conquest of Garrosh and how it stemmed from Krenna, but wait, rewind that a little bit. You said that there were two turning points for Garrosh turning into a bad, uh, a bad guy. So what's the second one? So not long into Northrend's expedition, the doors of Ulduar are opening up, and everybody remembers, well, not everybody remembers that cinematic, but it really was a good cinematic when the trailer hit. And both the Horde Alliance are called to Dalaran to band together to fight against the old god and his corrupted minions that he has. Only Garrosh still hasn't forgiven Varian for the whole Theramore Peace Summit, which really didn't end quite so peacefully. They meet face to face in Dalaran and end up battling it, and it takes Rowan to stop the brawl. But the most pivotal point in swaying Garrosh into being a bad guy can be found in the Secrets of Ulduar trailer patch 3.1. 
Uh, everybody's going to start like scrambling. Wow, man, that's going, that's going this. way. Yeah. I know. Head on over to YouTube, find that trailer. <laughs> what happened in that trailer? Well, at the end of the Garrosh skirmish with Barry and Rin, Thrall turns to Garrosh and says, you disappoint me. Now, I've, I've, I've actually, that, that, from a parent figure or, or from someone you admire or have a lot of respect for, just having disappointment can can do a lot. And, and I think it can kind of straighten people down a, a different path or, or even alter their path uh, substantially. So do you think that this this kind of disappointment from Thrall really affected him that much? So you have to remember with Garrosh is that he was primarily abandoned to a group of strangers, though in the way it works, work, it's really not strangers, but he's just not with his tribe. So he, abandonment, sick and orc with red pox, called weak because he's sick, ignored when asked about his father, and then, okay, speaking of his dad, the guy doesn't even say goodbye when given the opportunity to journey through the dark portal during the second war. It's, I, I have nothing to look back for, you know, nothing going on. Again, where's where's Garrosh's mom? Blizzard, where where is she? So <laughs> he's an Daddy extremely and insecure. mommy issues. I know. It's just parental abandonment. So he's he's really insecure for a young orc by the time Thrall comes around. And Thrall does the right thing during Nagran. He boosts uh, Garrosh's confidence with really kind words about what Grom did. He takes Garrosh under his wing. He starts treating him like a, like a close companion or even a son. I mean, though I wouldn't call him a son because aren't Thrall and Garrosh like pretty close in age if Thrall was born not long after they ventured through the dark portal and Garrosh was born not long might, after. Might, might, might cause a little bit of problems if that was actually <laughs> his son. But uh... Yeah. <laughs> but you know, here's Garrosh doing everything he can to make others proud of him and bring pride to his family name again. And it's all about that self-pride, that seed that Thrall started in Negron, and he's just disappointed his idol. And But yet this idol, uh, Thrall, in the end, he, Thrall still ends up appointing him war chief, even though he's extremely bloodthirsty. Uh, he constantly wants to wage war against the Alliance. Does that seem like a smart idea? I mean, I know Blizzard kind of said when he did it, it, it felt like Garrosh was, uh, you know, it was leaving them in strong, capable hands, even though he's he's a little bit bloodthirsty. Thrall kind of had this underlying hope for him, correct? Yeah, and really, in all fairness, like, I don't, I don't, I don't blame Thrall for his choice. I mean, he was... He had the call of the elements just really strong, and he had to act before anything happened. So he had to pick, like, who should be the next war chief. So with one choice dead, because, and I'm about ready to get cat bombed, watch out. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so animals can't train them to stay off the camera. So he cats, has one cats choice. are naturally drawn to the camera. You have to understand that by now. He is literally like it's retarded. So uh, we have Dra Dar Daraka, Sarafang, Sar younger Sarafang the Younger. Everybody just knows him as Sarafang the Younger. So he's dead. Uh, one of like two aren't orcs. We have another one that might have been a possibility in mourning, which is Sarafang Elder. So even though he didn't feel like Garrosh was the best choice for the role because he was bad at politics it was the most logical choice for Garrosh because that was the only way to keep the that pride and that strength and that unification for the orcs alive. What about Thrall? And, Go ahead. But, like, also, the, like, before, like, the elemental fiasco, we do have, like, Thrall doing one nice thing. Hello, cat. <laughs> and um, gives Garrosh his father's axe, Korhal. Uh, and, and the giving cat him... Distraction. <laughs> <laughs> giving him the uh, the gore howl. Do you think that could have potentially triggered more daddy issues? I wouldn't say like more daddy issues, but it did add further pride within Garrosh. Like he's trying so hard. That's all his brain is sitting there thinking about how he doesn't want to repeat what his father did. He doesn't want to repeat his father's mistakes. And having that axe, just having a part of your dad that close and you able to like wield it and have it that extension and know that it was the extension of your father's arm, that makes you so 
proud. And it's like, I'm doing something right. I am heading on the right path, the path of might for the orcs and the horde. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, Garrosh did extremely well for a time as war chief of the horde during Cataclysm. There was one quest in Stone Talon Mountain where a lot of people might not have done it because Cataclysm revamp classic zones, oh my god, nobody does it. So, yeah. So, Stone Talon Mountain, you do that quest line, and at the very end, Garrosh shows up just in time after the cowardice, destruction, and death of the Night Elf Druids in their training ground. And I had, like, this small glimmer of hope that perhaps Garrosh wasn't all bad, but, again, if you recall what Garrosh said in that Ulduar trailer, go watch the Ulduar trailer, where he quotes, a true war chief never partners with cowards. Hmm. Blizzard really kind of seems to dash that last little hope, uh, that last little bit of hope with that one quote. It's almost like they've been thinking about this from the very beginning, uh, but it just kind of proves that, that Garrosh can, can really never, could have never been the good guy, right? Somewhat, but at the same time, I have to disagree. It goes back to, you know, Garrosh's really well-developed character. He's only doing what he feels will be best for the Horde. I mean, he's this poor young orc, has known nothing but the bloodlust of his people. Wasn't born during the peaceful time, was born during that warmongering time. And he sees their suffering and barely scraping by while Thrall had, like, stretched the orcs thin with helping the lesser races of the Horde. And all he wants is the orcs to have a true foothold in Azeroth and to have that orcish might. But when he tries to do that, he's thoroughly put in his place on that by Jaina Proudmoore in the Tides of War novel. So now he has to look for a tool to add to his people's power to drive the Alliance off of Kalimdor soil. You know where you can read up on that uh, Tides of War novel, if you guys haven't heard? Audible.com. They've got it over on Audible. I know this wasn't a place for an ad, but gosh darn it, you should go check out Audible so you can check up and know exactly what we're talking about. Audible.com slash Game Breaker. You guys can get Tides of War for free right now. Free 30-day trial. Head over. Check it out. Sorry. Continue missing. <laughs> hey, Jane the Book's on there. That's fine. <laughs> it is. It is. Go check it out. Um, now, this uh, this kind of leads to the Horde uh, scavenging all over Pandaria for this tool. Um, and it, and it kind of looks like Garrosh might have found it in 5.4. The the data man the data mine models are are definitely s screaming I'm corrupted. Uh, he's finally repeated his father's mistakes and is falling into corruption. Correct. Well, in all technicalities, Grom Hellscream didn't really fall to corruption. I mean, he was e very easily manipulated due to his over exuberance. And if, it's, come on, you give him a few compliments and he's like butter in your hand. Although you can't really hold butter, but. Very prideful. You just have to compliment him, and he's just like, I will do whatever you ask me because, yeah, I'm, I'm Hellscream. So, Grom willingly corrupted himself, and in this case, that means Garrosh is repeating his father's mistake, though it's not through the Burning Legion, so it's still the same path, different source. And I, I agree, his model, I saw his model, and I just went, Blizzard, you said he's not corrupted. We had a deal. He was supposed to be just a bad guy. I mean, I was absolutely terrified. But thankfully, Dave Kosak, he tweeted, not once, but he tweeted twice, that Garrosh is in complete control of himself. In fact, one of the tweets I have on that subject from Kosak is that Garrosh is using that corruption like armor and a weapon. And to me, that's scarier than an old god controlling Garrosh. I mean, some say someone said that Garrosh is kind of pulling Cho'Gall's story with with controlling an old god, using it as as a, as a weapon. It's that's kind of the same thing. So does that mean that Cho'Gall is is just a, like what Cho'Gall was doing is just as scary as what Garrosh is doing to you? In in the case of Cho'Gall, like in the end, he really couldn't control himself. The old god corruption, he will like. He's he's an ogre for one. Some say that he actually ate Cho like Sathun and took it into himself instead of it just being an essence. Where Garrosh, according to like data mind files, whatever, we'll go into that. So at the end, the old god corruption ends up taking over him. Remember that crazy half that kept talking, and that was the one that was closer to the, to Sathun. So it took over, brought forth the powers of the old god in, in that dungeon, and but in the end. Having the corruption of an old god was the demise, was his own demise. 
And it looks like uh, Garrosh actually might be heading in that same direction in the Siege of Orgrimmar, correct? It's it's a likely conclusion to draw to, but come on, this is, this is con conspiracy craft. I, I have a few um, data mine sound files from Garrosh and the Siege of Orgrimmar. Again, you guys should go look up some of the data mine sound files, but I warn you, it is spoiler-tastic. Um, I didn't find a death file. Like, there's no death sound file. Hmm. And on top of that, after going through all of Garrosh's history and finding all the points in his life that formed him into, like, the orc he is today in Warcraft, you can't help but be impressed with the character development. And I, I actually had this discussion with Zista beforehand, and he pointed out it perfectly that Garrosh was born in World of Warcraft. He has no appearance in Warcraft RTS. He just appeared at the launch of the Burning Crusade, and a year and a half later in uh, the novel, briefly during Beyond the Dark Portal. And he's so well-developed as a character that he is well-noted by mo the majority of Warcraft players. He's almost at that pinnacle of when Warcraft players took out Arthas, only he's kind of has better turning points because all I could find with Arthas was when his horse died and he couldn't resurrect him, which was kind of dumb. So definitely better fleshed out than previous embosses in World of Warcraft. And you, you said that you really, like, it's obvious that Garrosh is going to die at the end of Siege of Orgrimmar on After Dark. And I'm going to take the opposite stance at Shafnet. And you don't I'm, think so? I don't. What if we don't kill Garrosh at the end of the Siege of Orgrimmar? What, would, what if we don't kill him at the end of the Siege of Orgrimmar and he goes and creates his own third faction? <laughs> There's that way. I mean, after all, we kill all this other, you know, lower minion peoples, but what What if? I mean, there's so many other avenues that you can go with that hanging end of what if Garrosh doesn't die. Gosh, I don't even know. That's just, uh, you can't just leave us hanging on with that. I mean, what if he doesn't die? Like, we're supposed to go in and kill him. He's the big enemy. Can't just leave us hanging like that, Missy. But unfortunately, that's all we got for you today. So, viewers... Tell us your memory of Garrosh in game. Uh, your hopes for his death at the end of the raid, or, or do you just kind of think it could happen in Warcraft? If uh, Garrosh actually lives within Warcraft, leave it in the comments below. Let us know your conspiracies, and be sure to tune in every week for your weekly dose of conspiracy World of Warcraft. Missy, thank you so much for joining us. We always appreciate the knowledge that you drop. Always blow our minds. I'm half wondering if anybody heard the second half of the entire video or if they just admired the cat and uh, immediately became He's distracted. He's such a troll. <laughs> he is such a troll. And if I left him out of the room, he'd cry pitifully the whole time. Aww, he just wants some camera time. That's all. Next week yeah. on Conspiracy Next week on Conspiracy Craft, we talk about Zach. Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> Tune in next week. We'll see you guys later.